Hello and welcome to episode 242 of Fergo and the Freak. I'm that bloke from Rugby League Project, Andrew Ferguson. You can find me on Twitter at AndrewRP. Join me as always is the enigmatic League Freak. You can find on Twitter at League Freak. How you going there, mate? I'm going very well, Andrew Ferguson. How are you? Um, oh, mate, this is these formal introductions are doing my head in. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing good. That's good. I'm, I'm doing good. What have you been up to in the last uh, half hour? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that segue attempt really failed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What what should you have been doing? I should have been shaving my balls. Because if you go to manscaped.com, right, and you put in our exclusive code NRL, you get twenty percent off and free shipping of every single item that they sell. And all of their items are about getting you match ready so that when this lockdown is over, you can hit the streets. And, you know, basically, when you, in the drop your, yeah, when you drop your pants, all the ladies will go, oh, wow, kept yourself looking good. And you'd be like, yeah. So, yeah, go to manscaped.com and, and get yourself looking good. Use the code NRL, 20% off free shipping. They've got a money back guarantee. And I personally recommend the Lawnmower 3.0. That'll get you sorted. Beautiful. Now, uh, speaking of sorted, we've sorted ourselves out a... Uh, an all-star guest to come onto the show tonight. Uh, so, welcome James Smith once again. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Wait, what, who's the all-star guest? That, that'd, that'd be you. Be. That's that'd you, be damn you. it. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Um, with that script that you just read out, it's not a script. Write... Which one? <laughs> I was going to say that that was quite good. It was really, really good. It was mm. lots of poetic stuff in there, and you. Really clever with your puns and everything. Yeah. Terrific. We see, we like smooth. they said to us, Manscaped said to us, like, do, do you want to have a script or anything? And we we're like, no, we're good. We'll just go with it. And I was, I was like, mate, are we able to have fun with it? And they said, we encourage you to. And so that's what we do in every episode. We just, you know, we, we play with it. <laughs> the script. That's the script. <laughs> Oh, man, I was paralysed just then. I had like a thousand options and I couldn't deliver any of them. No. <laughs> Very good. So, we decided to do, we, we decided to get uh, get James in because we're going to do a, a bit of an Ask Kenty episode. So should we just hook straight on in? Yeah, go for it. All right. Um, ask Kenty, Paul, do you think the NRL and clubs can increase revenue by players having personalised numbers and players' names on jerseys for sale to the fans? Oh, man. Well, that's what they do in Super League. I hate that. Yeah. Brandy wearing 55. That just that wrecked that idea, yeah, <laughs> I reckon. I about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's, when, when someone says Super League, I'd, my brain just goes straight to that number 55, and he wore it all season, and nah. No. Why do you pick fifty five? Do you know? But, um, because I thought that um, the story goes that he arrived at the club. He got signed pretty late for the ninety seven season, and there was no other good numbers left. Oh. And obviously, Gowie must have taken seven and stuff like that. I'm half making this up, but I, I half think that that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Like, Maybe he's authority. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah. I was going to say, was it because he was fifty five at the time? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> he's still playing great footy though. <laughs> he um didn't he win the man of the match in a tri tri series final with two he broken did. ankles or something? Yeah, he did. Oh mate, he yeah. was broken everywhere and he still <laughs> still won the game for New the series for New South Wales. He's a legend. Love Brandy. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. <laughs> um, oh, we, that, was, that was easy. Yeah, that was easy. Oh, we've got to ease ourselves in. See, I'm, I'm opposed to it as well because I figured. Clubs and the NRL are making enough money out of jumpers as is already, with every team having a different jumper every second week. So, why they're are only the they're only one hundred and sixty bucks. Like, how much more money do they fucking need <laughs> this year? It's going up next year. You know, yeah. you, you wonder how much the um the the clubs make from them, though, don't you? Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know what cut um, Asics and O'Neills and and whoever else is around make, but they must be. There must be a reason that they charge so much, hey? Like, I, know, I know ISC didn't make enough of a cut. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're not around anymore, are they? So. That's yeah. right. They're probably all only getting about 10% each. Yeah, yeah. 
which is ridiculous because the club owns the the identity of the strip and everything. It just gives you an idea of like how much they sell. Yeah, Isn't and how, how many people they... are involved in the process. Yeah, yeah. How many hands are in the pies? Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on Redcliffe and Ipswich being the next NRL expansion teams? Um, this person thinks they're great for the game in Queensland and strengths and state of origin. Mm. Redcliffe. I, yeah. I honestly don't know about, like, I, I feel like I, I'm not from Brisbane. It's not my job to tell them what team they should get. They should work it out themselves. I don't think it's going to help Origin, though. It's like, you know, they've, they haven't got a big player pool. Well, um, Redcliffe would work if they make sure that they base themselves in Brisbane somewhere, obviously on the north side. But they take their talent pool from Sunshine Coast and north of there. Um, Ipswich is kind of in the Broncos territory anyway, so I'm not too sure about that one. Yeah, and the thing that really confuses me about, like when somebody else, when somebody says, yeah, let's put another Brisbane team in, it doesn't matter who it is, it's always proposed that, like, that they're going to play out of Suncorp. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah, it just wrecks it a little bit when you say, oh, when you have dreams of Redcliffe and Ipswich which are their own centres, really. You know, yeah. imagine, those, imagine a stadium out at Ipswich. That would just be epic out, out, out there. And then it always comes with a caveat of, oh, they'd play most of their games at Suncorp. And I reckon it strips a lot of those sort of suburban kind of territory things away. I reckon it wrecks it a little bit. It does a bit. And I think that's probably why the, the Brisbane Bombers one is um, not a bad idea because it's not actually tied to a suburb or these former clubs. And they could just play out of Suncorp and it wouldn't feel as weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, Tom, oh, yeah, and the other thing I've always wondered too, like, wh- why the Brisbane Bombers? Like, what, and why is that stuck around? Like, it's such a random name apart from the alliteration, but why Bombers? It, it shows you how, how strong alliteration can be, I guess. <laughs> it's still there. Co- co-alliteration, yes. Um, Warren Smith Fox, how do you sit in a box for ninety minutes with Brayton Astor and Ben Iken? All I can talks about is his father-in-law. <laughs> he does. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, you know, you got to go with what you're good at, I guess. Play to your strengths. <laughs> Seriously, though, they were bloody terrible on the weekend. I can. I can. Is not good as a commentator. I can. No. I, I've convinced myself that Brayton Astor is there as a comedy act. Mm. Yeah. And so I can handle him now. But I can is he's horrible, mate. It's yeah, it's like he, having a it's like having a talent vacuum in the in the commentary box. <laughs> he's just sucking all the life out of a game. <laughs> oh, nice one. <laughs> Dude, I, I think what Ben I can um yeah, he's he's he, he it almost sounds like he's transferring NRL 360, Ben Iken, straight into the commentary box and just yes. continuing in that in that sphere. Like yeah, he's and, interviewing people and going, mate, it's a game, call it. <laughs> yeah. And then Braith, my, my favourite one that Braith does is um, he he waits until, like, they go to the bunker and and the, the footage is slowed down to four billionths of a second and then, and then the ball is dropped or the foot's on the sideline and then he... And then he says, "Oh, that was obvious. It was obviously out." <laughs> and he had to, he had to get to that point of microscopic footage to determine that. Yeah, that, that's my favourite part about his commentary. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no offence to Amy Shark. Oh, we know where this one's going. Uh oh. Whoever she is. <laughs> But seriously, <laughs> this is rugby league. The grand final pre entertainment has surely got to feature a loud jam and thump and Aussie hard rock band. With a question mark. <laughs> People always say this. I don't get. I like. I don't care who the the pre game entertainment is. In fact, there's been plenty of times where I've been so drunk before the kickoff <laughs> that I couldn't tell you who it was. <laughs> so. I don't care. Like, good luck to her. She seems like she's excited to sing. I don't know what she sings, but I don't think she makes songs for me. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't miss her either. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't care if they put a singing dog out on out on the field and it played the piano. I don't really care. I'm just waiting for the game. That would exactly. be awesome. That would be fun. <laughs> I know. I know you, you, you go on. 
yeah, he just, or, you know, who plays an instrument or something like that. Something, just pull whatever you like out of Twitter and, you know, search the gifts on Twitter. You know, there's lots of talent there that they could go chase and so put put one of those out there. <laughs> what what if the pre-game entertainment, right, yeah. was the famous poodle turning the tide on Mitchell Pearce and that was the entertainment? <laughs> Careful. <laughs> oh. You'd watch it though, wouldn't you? Like you. Oh, I'd I'd what I'd record it. People love karma. <laughs> you tune in to watch a bit of karma. How's it feel, Mitch? There you go. What's that? Uh, what's that bulldog that Joel Monaghan had? Where's that? <laughs> was that a bulldog? Was it? I'm pretty sure it was a bulldog. It, it definitely had soft lips like one. <laughs> it's, um, That's shocking. A peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> um, God, God, that's terrible. I can't believe I said that. Oh, man, what are you done? Yeah. James won't come back. Um, here we um, go. Who will be the number six for the Blues? Would Whiten be better in there due to his size? Or if it's Cody Walker, would you be concerned about his origin ghost returning? Cody Walker. Um, so who should play six? Yeah. All right. Gosh. See, I, w- I would have Walker at, at six, and I'd put Whiten in the centres. Likewise. Yeah. yeah. What's... um. Akira's oh, injured, isn't he? So, or is he? No, uh, I don't know that he's injured. Hey, no, because he's, he's the third best halfback in New South Wales, anyway. So, um, I'm just glad that um, Nathan Cleary has won his jumper back from Mitch Moses. That's that's all I'm really happy about. Because <laughs> um, apparently that was the talk, wasn't it? Like that <laughs> Moses had it under lock and key. Yeah, yeah, and it was up to Nathan Cleary to earn his stripes back. Yeah. yeah, and so all Cleary did was just keep playing good football because he knew Mitch Moses was going to end up going into a hole at some point in his career. <laughs> he does it every season. He starts out on fire, and then yeah. everyone starts to learn that, oh, if you just tackle him early, he just gets scared and stops running the ball. <laughs> Welcome to the second half of the season for Parramatta. That's all he did. He just went sideways. <laughs> And then Gutherson had to do all the playmaking. That's a sad state of affairs. No wonder they couldn't score points. <laughs> I remember you saying that um, your whole reason for setting this podcast up was to put shit on Mitch Moses, wasn't it? Or one of, one of them? <laughs> that was probably one of many. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, we've shied away from it a fair bit. We don't want to, you know, you don't want to spam the, spam the, uh, <laughs> your, your, your key, um, your key play, I guess. You want to make sure you don't use it too much, otherwise people get bored of it. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're yeah. bagging palms, people love that. Yeah, yeah, even the palms like it. Yeah, yeah. I, that's been what I've found over the years. <laughs> that they, like, you get good feedback when you bag the immortals and stuff like that, stuff like that. Yeah, when, like, when they've got these, uh, you know these players that play most most of them play for the Raiders. They're a few chromosomes short, and uh, they get upset when you point out how badly they're playing. It's it's pretty funny. Mind you, none of them complain when we're talking about how um how well uh, George Williams is doing out there in Canberra off the field. Yeah, yeah, goes all right, does he? All right, have you seen the size of his nose? Don't even know what they say about blokes with a big nose. Yes, yes. Yeah. No wonder he can't run too fast when, he's, when he first gets through the line. It takes him a while to wind up. He's got to get that momentum moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's the thing. Once he gets going, no one's catching him. But, um, oh, yeah, that's true. Because Freaky was saying that he doesn't run the ball enough. Were you? Mm. Yeah, yeah, so... Well, when, yeah, my... when he runs the ball, he runs it on like the fifth tackle, so he gets tackled. <laughs> he does, and and someone he? else has to kick it, and it's like that shit you can do in Super League. You can't do it in the NRL. That's right. Yeah. Uh, next, I was going to say next one. Do you think Bellamy needs to try coaching at another club to be in the discussion as greatest coach of all time? Oh, I'd say no. Yeah. No. Well, what, what does he have to do? Does he have to go and coach the Bulldogs or something to Tigers. prove a point? Yeah, Tigers. Tigers. I mean, the Tigers, Tigers did actually have an opportunity to hire him, and they went, nah. 
Oh. We just don't think you've got what it takes. <laughs> I love it when you do this. I love it. I, w- I was um, building an IKEA desk when all this COVID stuff came in. I didn't have a proper work desk. Mm-hmm. So I went to IKEA and bought this beautiful blue work, work desk that I'm sitting at. And anyway, I'm, I'm there. I've got you guys on. And it was the episode where um, you were like, you put the absolute cleanest through the West's Tigers. And it was, <laughs> and I was just fascinated in it. Like, it took me about 17 hours to put this desk t- together. And I think I listened <laughs> to, the, to that episode twice just for the <laughs> You just slice through every molecule of their existence. It was, it's great. <laughs> it might be great for you. <laughs> and, 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 and I like that freaky. Like he, he, he always tries to direct you towards that. He yeah, wants he you just, to go there. Yeah. He just prods me with a stick. <laughs> it's it's so easy. You just say like, a, you know. What what centre do you reckon will be your best centre next season? And it just goes downhill yeah. from there. Roses and boy. Yeah. <sighs> <Calm>. <laughs> um, someone here says, how will Penrith season be remembered if they don't win the grand final? As better than 2019. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what... I don't know. I've, I've found in the last few weeks, for some reason out of nowhere, Penrith are all of, all of a sudden getting a lot of hate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to uh, ask you, blokes. Oh, sorry, when I was, before I came on, I was going to ask you. Uh, it's it's them. It, it's them, but it's also like there's this real, it seemed, to me anyway, I don't know whether it's because I follow Penrith and they're up the top and I've, I'm just looking at things a little bit differently, but... There down. seems to be this Looking down, down, at down else. yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and and um and yeah, there just seems to be this real hatred from supporters of bottom eight clubs of of top eight clubs. Mm. And on social media, you just like Canterbury and um, Dragons fans Tigers. just hurl it. Yeah, yeah, Tigers hurl this shit at, at the still night. Still salty over Ivan leaving. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, yes. I think if, if anything's been proven in 2020, right, it's that when it comes to fan bases, shit rolls downhill. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah, we've been, down, there. We've been down the bottom of that hill for a while before, haven't we? So, yeah. Not yeah. as long as I have. <laughs> it's like, like, I love seeing the Parramatta fans trying to have a go at Penrith, and it's like, just shut up, you know. The last time they were any good, Peter Sterling had hair. Shut the fuck up, Eels fans. Long hair. So do you hate the Eels, Freaky? You, you no, hate they, them, they no. Just, why, you know what? I used to love nothing more as a teenager than going with my, my friends to Parramatta Games and watching them spend $10 million bucks on a bunch of bludgers that couldn't beat the Gold Coast. Like, I loved it. I thought it was great. I, like, they're just irrelevant, and they don't know it. I, I think the only team I probably have the most dislike for is the one I support. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a weird situation. Yeah, my my dad and I were like that um, with Penrith for a, lo- a long time. We used to be a, be their massive like biggest critics. It, like they do something good and. And, and we'd, we'd be like, yeah, it won't be long, it won't be long enough that. <laughs> so fuck this up, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, they, like those two Muppets who sit in that little stage at the side of the, the hall and... Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but nobody remembers their names. Yeah, yeah no, so I, I don't think I, I, there's any teams I hate. There's teams I think yeah. shouldn't exist, but that's different. Yeah, well, yes. I mean, you need them to exist so you've got a competition. No, but like, well, I like I think that there's teams you could remove tomorrow and no one would care. <laughs> Go on. Go on, yeah. Well, Manly and the Roosters, no one would care. Oh, fair enough. You know, Manly lives here, you know, they play their games out of uh, half of a tip. And then the Roosters, like, where are all the Roosters juniors going to go? Oh, wait a minute. They come from Campbelltown now. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Along with, along with South, because the West Tigers don't know how to use their own area. Moose they're still trying, City, just, back to the still trying to get someone out of Leichhardt. <laughs> seriously, I, 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 you get rid of two teams out of the comp. Put it, put, in fact, put one of them in, in uh, Brisbane, another one in Perth, sorted. Why, do, why not merge them? You merge what them and then... The Manly yeah. Roosters. 
Sea roosters. <laughs> sea roosters. What? <laughs> oh my the Bondi, god! The Bondi were ring of sea roosters. <laughs> I um I read this article in oh, uh, rugby league week. It must have been about fifteen years ago. And it was like, what's rugby league going to look like in 2050 or whatever? And I love it how every single look into the future involves like three or four clubs merging and everybody keeps their name. Mm -hmm. I I, I love that. (laughs) It's just a full takeover bid. (laughs) They've seen what Manly did to Norse and go, yeah, that's a system that'll work. (laughs) Well, I remember when the the Steelers and the Dragons merged and they were like... (coughs) They should call them the Steel Dragons, mm-hmm. and if people were like that, kind of defeats the purpose of what the St George thing's about, you know. Yeah. They should just they should just relocate them to Wollongong and call them Illawarra. That'd be good. That'll that'll get some people listening. <laughs> <laughs> and call them the Steelers too. You know, I mean, dragons aren't real. No, well, the dragons are. Um, so their mascot is a dragon that got killed by a exactly. Knight. Mm. So they should be called the Knights. <laughs> it's already taken. Yep. Fools. <laughs> um, We're going really good here. It's really oh, good. Oh, yeah. yeah. These ones are always great. We're burning um, all the bridges. This is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kenty, do you think the Rabbitohs will be a tough team next season? You'd think so. I reckon they'll all... still be a top eight side. Yeah. Is anybody significant leaving? Um can't think, think of so. no. They're, they're not already a good. This, geez, they scared Penrith the other night. They mm. they really put the, like fifteen to go. Oh, the attack never little, stopped. No, no, and dead set. Like if if Reynolds has his foot behind that red forty meter line, it's a different game. Like mm-hmm. they they were on fire, and and, and Penrith's defence is really good. But you just wonder what what would have happened if um. If he was like, you know, half a foot behind it or um, further back, yeah. yeah. All right, let's get to the uh, the elephant in the room. Okay. Is the Dalian voting system going to get an overhaul as we continue to see incompetent judges consistently giving out points that make little sense? And why did Buzz lie about not knowing who won the award on air when he had written an eight page spread on it? <laughs> oh, had he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, but you've got to lie. You've got to, don't you? You can't say, yeah, okay, we knew, yeah, all, <laughs> we're, we're guilty, yeah, you're all right. Like, you know, we're, we're idiots. You've got to, like, you've got to do that. But I, I love with accounting how everybody all of a sudden becomes an expert on how every single player played in round 15 mm. against the nobody team. Like, it's just, it's, it's really weird. I- I do live updates for the uh, League Unlimited website every now and then, and we've got to do three, two, one points on that. And every time I do put in my three, two, and one, everyone says, "Well, what about this guy?" And I, my response every time is, "If you don't like it, you can do it." <laughs> you, you don't just get say paid you're an to expert. Do it. People really like it when you say you're an expert. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's a response. But like, what are you going to do? Like, like, yeah. Um... I thought he was the fourth best player in the field. I didn't think he was the third best player. Like that's, that's yeah. usually my, my line of argument. Yeah, he was pretty close. So I had him fourth. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, okay, he's, uh, it's. Uh, I find a lot of people will go with whoever the commentators say had a good game. Mm. Oh, yeah. he's had a great game. Oh, well, he must have been. He must get three points then. I think that must be how the Dalliams are decided as well. Oh, right. Just on yeah. who the commentator say had a great game, which is always – it's it's not too bad sometimes, but when you get the games with blockers on there, he says everyone's having a great game, and they must all get confused. And who do we give the three to now? Blockers said everyone. <laughs> That's all he does. Oh, he's had a great game. Oh, he's had a great game. Oh, he's had a great game. And all he did was like three hit-ups, but he did them in five minutes. Oh, that's a great game for blocker. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Spare me. <laughs> Um, but should the voting system get an overhaul? So I don't know if you know, in the 80s, what they used to do is give every player a score out of 10. Mm. It took a, long, a lot longer to uh, compile the, the results, obviously. Yeah, and who wants to do that? Stats yeah. nerds. Yeah, see? You're biased. You're pushing a fucking agenda. I will admit, I did have my hand in the air when you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can't see me. Have me in the air anyway. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, because in league week, they used to rate, give every player out, rating out of 10, and mm-hmm. nobody seemed to, from what I can remember, nobody seemed to complain about that. So I don't know what the, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a complaining age, isn't it? So that's right. I think, it, I think with the league week ones, though, eventually what happened is pretty much everyone started with a six and you yeah. went up or down from there. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because if you gave someone a two, yeah, you'd want to watch your back. <laughs> exactly. So I remember when I used to rate all of the players after a State of Origin match out of 10, and my thought was you started with a six. That was an average score. Um, and I remember I would give, like, players sevens and eights and, like, thinking, oh, yeah, he played all right, and people would go crazy. They'd be like, how can you only rate him eight? And, and But, like, I never used to care what people thought. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> well, we started doing ratings on Origin games last year. Just to see what people would say. We were giving out some pretty low scores for some players. People were getting angry at it too. You they were, it, was, it was funny. Yeah, we should do, we'll do that again this year. Absolutely. Um, will the Titans be a top eight side next season? Mm, that's a good question. I'd say yes, because I, I think they're on a pretty good trajectory. I can't say that word. Yeah. Um, they're going, they're, they're going up, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, well, I suppose the question is, which team will they replace in the eight? Yeah, I'd say straight away um, you'd think they'd pass Cronulla and you'd think they're on a on a path to to um, go past Newcastle as well, I reckon. Yeah, yeah I yeah. would agree. That's, they're the two I thought to, as well. I, um, I think everyone else is going to be about the same. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the the Titans should be a lot better. But then, I like I think, is there anybody else that might make it past them as well and and drop those two out of the eight? Maybe the Warriors, depending on how they Tigers. go at home. Tigers. Yeah, God, I say Tigers. It's uh, I can't think of any other team that's going to go yeah, any Tigers. better. That's for sure. The In the Tigers. bottom eight, agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, the Tigers will be there. Well, you actually went down this year, didn't you? You finished tenth. No, no, the table was, it was a technical thing. The table was the other way around. I heard Donald Trump explain it perfectly. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got them. You got the ladder the wrong way around. Yeah, so Penrith actually got the wooden spoon. They're actually playing to see who who is declared to be the worst team of the year. That's what's going uh, on this week. Okay. And, and, yeah, go on yeah. by that. Get ready to win the fucking minor premiership next year, Andrew. <laughs> Oh yeah, he got that thing nailed down, <laughs> and that goes to what Freaky was saying on a few shows. I think it was fifty-five shows ago mm. um, when uh, when you were saying that Penrith had an easy draw. You know, every, every every time they play at home, every time they play away in the dark on a on a Sunday, none of those counted. So we probably are wooden spooners, I reckon. That, that's yeah. fair enough. I still got people arguing me over that. Like they were actually talking about the fact that the bus rides were shorter or longer or something like that, and you know they'd have more time sitting. What the hell, yeah. bus rides? Seriously? Come on! I like the way Ricky Stewart was complaining last week about having to travel up to Queensland and stuff. It's like Ricky, buddy, that's why you win more games next year, so you don't have to do all this shit. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, he got it. He... They travel up to Queensland every year. Yeah. Yeah, I, I reckon like I reckon that sort of model of, of traveling is going to stick around. I reckon teams are going to realize that uh, we don't really have to stay overnight in Brisbane or, or go or go down to Canberra and stay there. Like, let's mm-hmm. just do this, fly down, fly back because it's you know it probably helps with the like preparation for next year, doesn't it? So, sorry for next week. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, sorry to get serious there for a sec. No, no, it's, okay. it's a good point. It'll probably save money too on the hotels and stuff, and yeah. and, and you also don't have to worry about players going it's, onto it's, Tinder it's and shit like that. Cost. Yeah, TikTok and yeah. yeah. Accommodation's a cost, and you know, internet um, access. Why don't they just go camping? They'll just get tents. There's no pubs out in the bush. There's no internet out there. What can they get up to? They'd find something. Yeah. They would, eh? They, <laughs> they yeah, kill the like and Someone's or rooting something. a tree or something. <laughs> it's like, Jack, get your cock out of that. Um, 
Uh, since the Telegraph can't keep a secret, should they be excluded from knowing Dallium results ahead of time? Yes, 100%. Agreed. <laughs> There's no other answer, is there? <laughs> no, they should never no. have known. Yeah. And I thought the um, the NRL owned the awards from now on. I, I thought they thought they controlled them. So they bought them, was it yeah. a year or two ago? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and people have been telling me the reason why the, the Telegraph get told is so they can meet their deadlines. And I thought, hang on, the news was revealed online, and online is 24-7. Mm. You know, if, if deadline's something they've got to meet, um, fuck them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and like, you wouldn't but They can report that... on NRL games that finish at 10 o'clock you know, on time. <laughs> That's the day, The yeah. Dalian results come through at the exact, exactly the same time. What do they need to know? Mm. <laughs> it's stupid. I, I don't know. Right. Yeah, um... I, yeah, I don't know. They can get stuff. Um, we'll say it for you, James. <laughs> <laughs> when will NRL realise the Daily Telegraph is no friend of the game? Yeah, I think um, what the answer to, to that is, and I know that, you know, you guys are all ready to launch, l- launch into it, but, like... <laughs> They they do they write positive stuff, but people buy negative, like they they buy negative news. Like it's mm-hmm. just it's a sad fact of life. Like you know you can you sit there and bag the media all you like, but you you, you yourself are going to click on that horrible thing that happened to somebody, ain't you? Like mm-hmm. it's just it's yeah. It's well, I find it largely it's because it's the negative stuff the loudest about. Hmm. And that, that's what makes, that's what conditions you, I guess, to reading about it. And I think this is a, without getting too deep into it, it's sort of a condition of something that happened when the 9-11 stuff happened. Because that's when fear in the media and, and, you know, negative stories stuff like that really went to the next level. Like, it was going on before, obviously, but it just sort of stepped up an awful lot then. You know, 24-7 um, news cycle, all sort of stuff. Just everything become more intensely focused on the news and the best way to keep people's attention was to have them scared or worried or something negative's on or some sort of scandal's on. You're not going to keep them keep their eyeballs on something if you're talking about, this cute little cat just won a cat show. No one's going to go, oh, what happened next? It's why Anchorman 2 is one of the greatest movies ever made. You they, yeah, yeah cuz they pointed that out so perfectly how the 24 hour news cycle changed the way that we took in news and entertainment and stuff like that um I, like i i think that it also comes down to like the way people are wired is that you you kind of need to focus on if there's a problem and if all you hear about is there's a problem there's a problem there's a problem you focus on that so I and I think it all just sort of comes together. I, I think the best thing most people can do is switch off the news these days. Like we we don't read the the newspapers and stuff like we used to, and I think that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, I like I don't I don't see why the NRL should be doing any favors for the mainstream media that doesn't have a a deal with them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I just can't get over, can't get past your Anchorman reference. I like, <laughs> I liked it in the first movie how they're um, designing the, you know, what, what what's going to happen on this on the, on the network, mm-hmm. and having this editorial meeting, and um, oh, we we should have more of this, more of that, and then, and then they start talking about the sport, lots of home runs, lots of touchdowns, and then Champ Kind goes, and no soccer. <laughs> <laughs> so. Sorry, I, my brain was just like the bet clanging cymbals as soon as you said Anchorman. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Right. I, I, I really do. I like Anchorman too. I think it's like really, really good satire about it all. Absolutely. Yeah. But very rarely when the sequel is better than the first. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, are West, South and Canterbury forgetting that unless they give up a like-for-like replacement, Melbourne, Melbourne will not be releasing Josh Addo Carr? Look, the West Tigers have a like-for-like replacement financially, mm-hmm. cost-wise, and that's Moses and Bai. I don't know Shut why Melbourne's stalling. How dare you? <laughs> why are they stalling? I think they've also got Russell Packer. I've seen him run. Adokar can run. 
who yeah, I'm trying to think so. who would you Josh want? Reynolds? Who would you want from the different teams? Like the, the Bulldogs have no one. Like they can get, go away. But who would you want from Souths for Addo Carr? Oh, from say Corey Allen. Yeah, but he did his knee. Um, Alex Johnson. Well, that's the one I would want. I reckon Alex Johnson would be. He'd be worth more than that O'Carr, wouldn't he, as a footballer, you reckon? It's pretty... Uh, I reckon they'd be about... I feel like they'd be about the same. So is the issue... So Melbourne want to... Are Melbourne trying to get rid of that O'Carr, or are they trying to... Uh, Adokar's sort of... asked for a release because he wants to move back to Sydney. I think it's for family reasons or personal reasons, something along those lines. So Melbourne and don't want to get, get rid of, Melbourne don't want to lose him before They've said, we will, we will honour it, but we need to make sure that we're getting a like-for-like like replacement for you. Jeez, I'd be, if I was them, I'd be saying, no, we want someone, we want we want whoever we want. Mm. Like, how badly do you want Josh at Josh Car? Exactly. You know, yeah, I'd, 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 like, they're in a real position of power here. Like, until, until you can offer up a, um, you know, even... Yeah, like a, a Jerome Luai or a Stephen Crichton. If you want Josh Adokar that much, then the ball's in our court, and don't don't give us like for like. Like we're not we're not going to go there. I, I reckon he'll be playing for Melbourne until his contract runs out. <laughs> That's pretty much what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What Is about if chance? they went to What if they went to Manly and they said we'll give you Josh Adokar for McNuggets? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a ball. That's a ball changer. Thing, Game changer. <laughs> There's no chance that Bellingham would let him sleep in the car. Not even no, once. No. no. <laughs> even when he would go to bed at night, at, you know, ten o'clock at night, Bellingham would sit there and say, "Wake up!" <laughs> I tell you what, he'd be. Good. I reckon he'd be really good at Melbourne, though. Like, a, they'd. How? When was the last time they had a real game break in centre? Uh, Manly. No, no, the the, the Storm. Yeah. Did it have to be like English, surely? Yeah. He was mostly 5'8 there. Yeah, 5'8, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Didn't they have a few Parramatta players there? <laughs> okay, well, I'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Four grand final appearances in five seasons. Does the Storm need to win the Premiership to reflect that consistency and dominance, or is making four grand finals success enough in its own right? Well, this is a, like I'm glad this came up because somebody the other day said um, in the lead up to the Penrith prelim, they said this was South's fourth straight preliminary final, mm. and I thought, and they haven't kicked on like with any of them. So, yeah, to your point about um, you know, what sort of season is this going to be looked upon for Penrith if they don't win it? Like, what, what what's What's the point of, of reaching those sort of end of season games if you don't win them? Yeah, mm. I can see where that question was coming from now. Yeah, yeah, um, I well, think they'd still be regarded as successful. How could they not be? Oh, yeah, True. For sure. Yeah. But that, like, if you look at it historically, right? In twenty years' time, will people look back at this era? And say, yeah, they they won a couple of grand finals there, but how many did they lose? Like, that's pretty bad. But then I think of someone like a LeBron James, who has lost more NBA finals series than he's won. And I don't think that affects him as much because you kind of look at his consistency and his ability just to get there and you say, that's unbelievable. Yeah. No, it's true, isn't it? Like, nobody nobody looks at it that way. Mm. I went on a... um, a tour of Yankee Stadium a few years ago, mm. and you know you see all the all the the Hall of Fame that, that they got there, and mm-hmm. and, the, and the tour guide says we've we're the winner of the most World Series championships, you know, in, um, in the world, and and then a few steps, a few steps later he says um we've also lost the most World Series. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I loved that. I, so I heard know, I heard the yeah. other day that Yankee Stadium. People that are overseas don't realise that it's basically surrounding Yankee Stadium is like a war zone. It's not a place you'd want to be. Oh no, the Bronx. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not not on the tourist um, trail. For that's that's for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
Um, there you go. Do you think the 17 straight victories in 2002 by the Bulldogs should be recognised by the NRL and media outlets? If, if they want to recognise them, it's up, up to them, isn't it? Of course, of course they're recognised. You know, mm-hmm. The results always stand whether they've been illegally constructed or not. Mm-hmm. And that goes on in England as well for years. You know, Teams that were insolvent, the results still stand. Yeah. Hmm. You know, yeah, they much they much strict you know strike the the results from the the latter, but the players' appearances, the points they scored, stuff like that, that all still counts in their official records. Yeah, the game yeah. still exists. You can't you can't remove the games. It it would throw a whole lot of stuff out of whack. Mm-hmm. I don't know why people keep banging on with that crap because <laughs> they don't want others to enjoy success. Probably. Oh, that's right. They go, oh, you know, every time you see this, there's always this small section of morons, and I'm being kind to them. <laughs> um, who say that pretty much three quarters of what Cameron Smith achieved in his career should be stripped off him because of the salary cap scandal that went on. Mm. I've got to keep yeah. telling them Cameron Smith was not the accountant. Mm. <laughs> like, if someone gives you a, a contract and it's got on there shitloads of money. You're not going to sit there and go, hmm, I wonder if this will put us over the cap. You're going to go, fuck yes, I'm buying me a boat. Where do I sign? <laughs> yeah, and when, they're comp- and when they're compiling their strategy of cheating and, you know, and they're having a meeting there and, and they're like, we can't start Cameron Smith's not he. He's, he's a grand architect of this whole That's, deal. Yeah. yeah. He just had to go get some new batteries for his little Casio calculator. The thing got broken last time. There's too many zeros. I love I love fan logic. It's it's the best. It's like <laughs> that referee hates our team, and so like, yeah, yeah, you, your that referee sits around at dinner at night plotting how he's going to screw your team over on the weekend. Like that's that's what happens. Yeah. I love it. It, just, it made me think about, like, with this winning streak, Penrith's on, and people say they haven't had to travel as much as other teams. Yeah. Like, what's the threshold for, for kilometres that you have to travel before a winning streak like that counts? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so it, it depends on what club does it, I think. If if it was a Bulldogs or a, or a Dragons or South, like, you know, there's no way that a point like that would be brought up because mm. it's, you know, a battler club who isn't really supposed to do anything good on the field. Like, because, you know, if we're being a bit rude, winning 17 in a row, like, and, and being from Penrith, that's just, how, how rude can you be? <laughs> well, yeah, and that's a really good point because you could yeah. say, like, okay, South Sydney has won the most premierships, but they won all but one of them in eras where they could literally take a bus to every single opponent they had to play. Yeah. Someone pulled me up once. Um, I'm a massive Ray Price fan. I think he's God. Mm-hmm. Like, just, <laughs> like, yeah, I love him. So and, does um, he. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And somebody said, oh, it yeah, wasn't that good. We were, like, the guy played, he, he, he was half dead by full time every single week. And, uh, and that, yeah, and that's what somebody said. Like, oh yeah, but he dominated when there was only Sydney clubs. Mm. It's like, well, who did you want him to go and play? Did you want him to invent clubs to go and play in the state or something? Like, mm. he played who, who he had to. Yeah. He played everyone he had to. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, back then they had midweek cup games against country teams and Brisbane teams and stuff like that. He played against everyone. Yeah, and I'll punch him in the head every tackle and had yeah. a career over in England. Yep. I think he even played in a game where against the Bulldogs once when two or three of the Bulldogs players wore illegal shoulder pads that were made out of fiberglass. Yeah, and then when they hit his shoulder, they just shattered. It was just like he was that tough. Yeah, concrete. <laughs> yes. That was um, a joke. I was going with it. <laughs> I know it isn't up to you, but can you see how King Guffo... Oh, Jesus. Mm. And he didn't get any points in the last round because he was shit. Uh, and do you believe the voting system needs to change to stop any form of bias creeping in with refs deciding points, for example? This bias. um, this Gutho thing only, and all the controversy around it only came up because Brandy and Ben Eichen and Cooper Cronk and um, who was the other one? Who was the other one on there? Michael Caitlin? Enos. <laughs> yeah. I reckon if they don't say anything about it, you know, Gutho had a quiet game or, or he had a, a, a brilliant game. If, if they don't say anything, then it's just all accepted and, 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 and that. But, yeah, it's just funny how it just exploded the second they mentioned it. Yeah. Yes. 
Um, he should have at least got two and a half extra points for his hair, though. <laughs> no, you, know, you know what I like most about that game is that uh, <laughs> Luke Brooks scored a point, and that was pretty much the point that stopped Gutherson from getting the title. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> everybody should be loving Luke Brooks for that. Luke yeah. Brooks nearly won the Dally M last year, didn't he? He did. He, he did play reasonably well. Oh, he he did get more votes than he probably deserved, I'll be honest. Oh. Um but he did score more, more points than Moses and Bynes. That's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it how you have like little competitions within your club as well. It's it's, it's a great it's a great thing. Yeah, yeah typically whenever the, the full list comes out, I always look in there and I go, you know, I figure, oh, I wonder who the highest tiger, tiger scorer was. And like when most people go and see who's got the highest points for their club, they start from the top of the list and go down. I usually have to start from the bottom and work my way up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there they are, three points. Oh, good work. <laughs> we, you know what I was just thinking then is that uh, that one of the trains of thought with Cleary not winning the Dally M runaway Dally M winner, especially when they've won seventeen straight, is that other Panthers players took points away from him. But it's not like there were other Panthers players that were really high up the list of uh, Dally M points getters either. No, so that's kind of, that's kind of the weird. The thing that got Cleary and what took points off him was TikTok, and he should sue him. <laughs> yeah. Two Did weeks. He... Two weeks where he missed. Was two, two games he missed because of the TikTok video? Yeah, yeah. That's all it cost him, man. And logic says, pure logic, says that if he had played in those two games, he would have had blinders. He would have got three points. He would have got four so... points in each game. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So he was robbed, you know. He, he was robbed. But no one's talking about Cleary being robbed. Or because he danced, or because he wore a hat stupidly. It was one of those two things. I can't remember now. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Dancing. If he wasn't dancing in a TikTok video with a bunch of blonde chicks, do you reckon anyone would have cared? Like, if it was just him and a bunch of dudes, do you reckon people would have been so upset? Yeah, he's the, the, the old, he's Australia's tall poppy, isn't he? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll make that call. Yeah. Do, you re- just, do you reckon he's going to become Sydney's Cameron Smith? <laughs> As far as people's attitudes towards him. That's brilliant. That is really good. Yeah, that's interesting. I hope he's as successful. Yeah. That would be cool. Because I reckon with that with that smile he's got, mm. he would irritate so many people so much more than Cameron Smith does. Because Cameron Smith's got that little bit of a uh, grin sort of thing about him that sort of riles people up. But Cleary's got that big toothy smile. He looks so happy every time he smiles. And he, every time someone, someone has a fucking dig in me or something, he just whips out the smile and they just go, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> now, now we're getting to the bottom of um, Fergo's psyche here. It's, um, we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I like Cleary. So I, I, the, the thought of having someone who can piss off people just by smiling, I love that. Because <laughs> he's the sort of person to do it. He wouldn't say anything. He'd just smile at him. Uh, welcome to my life. I mean, jeez. <laughs> um, I, I think the thing that Cleary needs to do in, in order with so many other teammates playing brilliantly and they're stealing all these points each week, I think what he really should do to win the Dally M is just leave the Panthers, I think. It's his only solution. It's, 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 it's the only way to go. I think, wow. I, I think he should. Uh, what I think he needs to do, right, he needs to buy a ridiculously expensive car yep. and he needs to remind everyone that every single year he's a millionaire, every year. And he's going to do that for the next about 15 years of his life. And he should have won the Dally M this year but was robbed of it. And he's yeah. going to win a premiership as a young bloke. He's going to be an immortal. And anyone that doesn't like it can go fuck themselves. <laughs> you know what he needs to do? He needs to do something like Benji Marshall did when he got his first big paycheck. He went and bought a Lotus. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Cleary's got to do something similar, and even more Larry, and have on his number plates, Dally M. <laughs> <laughs> what about when um, those stories that you hear of Freddie Fittler rocking up in a Harley Davidson to training? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. He def- yeah, he, he did the same similar thing. Like, we're joking that how you'd spend your big paychecks, but... I think he went out and bought a Harley Davidson and he rocks up and, like, yeah, does a skid in front of Gus Gould or whatever. I, 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 hope, he, I hope he did anyway. Yeah. None of that surprises me. <laughs> Karen yeah. would have got cranky because he wasn't wearing a helmet or something. Oh, is that Karen, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, 
It learns, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone here says, Kenty, what was for lunch today? Kenty strikes me as a soup person. Really? What's that? Oh, his jaw gets sore from talking shit all the time. He's just going to need just something he can just drink through a straw occasionally just to give his jaw a break. So you're, you're on the right track, but you're wrong. Okay. You know what he had for lunch? Something alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> so you something liquid through a straw. Yeah. <laughs> Fair James, enough. James is doing his very best to be diplomatic over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... Here we go. What is your take on the refereeing standards this year, Paul? Uh, well, he bitch and moan about it. Oh, gosh. Because that's what you're supposed ref- to do. Refs, the refs, refereeing is quite good. Yeah. It's fine. Especially given that they had the rules change on them, you know, after the season started. Then they had one of them taken off the field. And then they didn't have any official sideline officials. They just had other referees there mm. filling in. Um, they did pretty well, considering... I don't know why people keep bitching about the fucking rest. God, move on, people. Mm. Are you watching football? Are you watching referees? Yeah. I don't know. Um, what is the new criteria for selecting the team of the year? I'll tell you this. It's based on who gets the most points on the Dallium count. It's pretty simple. Yeah, that's straightforward, isn't it? I thought that that, that was really well known. Yeah, that was really clear. Um, oh, no, no, it's something something worse than that. It's something like, oh, if you play for Penrith, you get an instant... It's a conspiracy. Spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all a conspiracy. <laughs> who, who cares? Because really? that like... person from my team wasn't in there. <laughs> God, it's wonderful, isn't it? Imagine how good your life is if that's your biggest problem. I know. Like, yeah, yeah. You're going all right, aren't you? Yeah. Um. This one seems to be their idea for something. So they've got his split round for the first round of the finals. I like it. Thoughts on these as to keep broadcasters happy filling games. Best of the rest, PM's 13 versus the Barbarians team. Recently retired Legends charity game. One night of sevens round robin Indigenous and Pacific Islands teams. What? <laughs> There's a lot there. <laughs> I don't like the idea of split rounds in the finals. That I no. really hate that. No, you don't need split rounds in finals. A best of the rest PM13 team, that would just be called Blur13. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Isn't that what the PM13 exactly. is? Yeah. Exactly. It's pretty yeah. much made up of players that were in the bottom eight. Sometimes I put a few other players in there, but it's basically bottom eight players. Yeah. Recently retired Legends charity game. Yeah, I think when they had one of those games, it was Thurston's team versus Cameron Smith. <laughs> I think they got a little bit burnt by the publicity that come after that. Yeah, people didn't like that at all, did they? No. no. Oh, so they get one. <laughs> exactly. Well, I think one of the arguments that came from the West Tigers was how come Robbie Farrell didn't get one? How come Benji Marshall didn't get one? Some other guy, mm-hmm. I didn't care. Oh, geez, I hope they got to the bottom of that and I hope they find out. I think the only oh, one I could geez. have said, if the, the criteria they used as to why Cameron Smith and Jonathan Thurston got, got one, meant that Paul Gallen should have also got one. But that's a bit of a touchy subject, you know, after what has gone on in Paul Gallen's career, you know. Yeah, true. It's it's difficult to fill a stadium well, with a bunch of uh, people that what, want to celebrate, yeah, when everyone hates your guts. <laughs> after what Gallen's dad called the selectors. <laughs> and, um, you know, what went on at the club in 2014, you know, it's uh, you, you don't really want to be celebrating that too much. No. They could have had, a like, a charity horse race for him or something instead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Farlap Award. Um, a Paramount looking to hire some assistant coaches to help Brad Arthur. In the last week, he's read Paul Green, Shane Flanagan, and Tim Sheen's names mentioned. Tim Sheen's ain't going to be an assistant coach anywhere. No. His ego won't allow him to be second chance to anyone. Um, Shane Flanagan... And there's rumours that he's going to be... The Sharks are going to sign him for 2022, which is absurdly stupid. Yeah, that would be dumb. You know what's interesting? I found out... Remember all that stuff about Kyle Flanagan? Well, Shane Flanagan is his manager. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, how weird's that? So I thought you were going to say that Shane Flanagan is his dad or something. <laughs> oh, God, that's, that's ridiculous. That's sick. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that stuff that's happening out at Penrith where the uh, 
Panthers coach is knocking on with the star halfback's mum. Yeah, That's I remember you said dropping that last week. That was nuts. Mm. He's, he's trying to destabilise the club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that'll come to a head sometime next year, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, are there times that you want to hit Steve Roach for his constant interrupting of you on the Matty Johns podcast? Look, that's actually a good thing that Steve Roach does. People should be giving him some sort of credit for that because the less uh, the less that Paul Kent talks, the better. Yeah, I've I've never heard the Matty Johns. I've seen it yeah, right. on TV, but I, I, I don't listen to it. I don't really listen to too many footy podcasts, to be honest, because I'm on the very best one there is. <laughs> Busy watching a podcast. I know. Um, I've got to admit that I, I watch that podcast every week. Oh, really? Is yeah, I love good? it. Yeah, I love it. Uh, <laughs> like mainly because um, they've all got like they all share stories, like you know about the eighties and nineties and mm-hmm. getting drunk and on tour and blah blah blah. That, that stuff just hits a spot. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, does he? Does he, does he interrupt Matty Johns a lot? I don't know. I don't know. I think Blocker's... Yeah, he's good on that show. Yeah. I like Blocker when he's not at the game. <laughs> when he's at the game, he's he's very hard to handle. But when he's not at the game, I find he's actually pretty pretty decent sort of commentator away from the live calls. I don't mind him then. Maybe that's just me because I'm a former Balmain fan. I, I, I can't hate him entirely. No. Um, He's not a hateable sort of a person, no, is he? No, no he's, not, like he's, he's not Benny Elias. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I don't even hate him. He, he cops flack as well. It's just like, really? Yeah, Benny deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a Balmain thing, is it? It's, yeah. it's a um, in, inside thing, is it? Yeah. No, it was about all that development stuff. He pretty much bankrupted the Balmain club almost. Allegedly, jeez. Yeah. He's a good, he's a good player though. Yeah, he was. He was, he was pretty player. good. He was um, pretty much the third best hooker in the game in the eighties and nineties, wasn't he? Behind um, Steve Walters and Royce. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, you better say Royce. Oh, I'm always going to say Royce. Royce is a <laughs> legend. Roy, Royce and I go way back. We're close. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Um, can you ask Buzz who's going to win the Clive Churchill medal? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. If Melbourne win, Cameron Smith will win it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, if Penrith win the game, it, it, they will want to give it to Cleary, I think, because they like giving it to names. Yeah. And halves. Yeah. Like, like, say, uh, I don't know, say James Fisher-Harris has some ridiculous game. He'd be hard-pressed to win the Clive Churchill medal. Yeah, he's never going to win it. Mm. No. Yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> um, hey, PK and Benny, all be the scandal of the Telegraph leaking the Daily Award. How did you find the night and the TV version, and did you think the team of the year was right? Well, I think that from the brief amount of the telecast that I saw, um, bored. What did you think of the telecast, James? Because, like, I I ranted on it yesterday on the podcast. What did you think of the whole, like, production of it? Oh, the production was, it was obvi- like, what it was. It, it, it was what it was, wasn't it? It was what you do when you can't have any people in a room and you and you have to have an awards ceremony so you try and be clever yeah and yeah oh i i, I wasn't really that angry about it like I, I don't know like what else could they do like have a proper have a proper zoom call or something or not have it like they had to do something i, I think was, if they had yeah. if they hadn't had that blue uh the green screen thing that would have been better yeah but like again like, like what do you do do you just put put everyone in the same room and, like, Q&A, like, space everybody out. And... Well, I don't know why they couldn't have just had each each team at their local leagues club. Oh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, with the worries and the storm, it's a bit different. They could just pick some other place. But yeah. um, they could have done something like that and then just have the video go to the leagues club. 
be done yeah. with it. Otherwise, we're just watching a whole heap of people winning awards they knew they were going to get. <laughs> yeah, true. And that's for no. the team. Oh, sorry, that's for the team that got picked. I saw a comment like, you know, because uh, Katani Staggs got centre of, of the year or something. Mm-hmm. Center of, yes. Centre in the team of the year, sorry. And someone said, how can a Bronco player make it? Mm-hmm. It's like it's just a, yeah, was it? Was it? It's I, like, saying, I wouldn't put any Broncos player in the team of the year. I mean, it wasn't a criticism of Tony Staggs. He, he did play well, but, I mean, come on, you can't. You can't be in the team that was historically bad <laughs> was that and get you? made as one of the best was ever. Was that really you? I did say that in the podcast last night, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, I just think... You could rip into me, I don't mind. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, I mean, we had a pretty good year, didn't we? Yeah, you can play because... well. I'm not debating that. Yeah, that's as passionate as I'm going to get about it. Does... Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else is on here? As it's hard to win three grand finals in a row, um, do you think an Eels player from the 80s should be the next immortal? And then they oh. suggest Brett Kenny. Oh. No. Mm. no. No. Brett Kenny was a great player, but I wouldn't say he's an immortal. The next immortal, as, as we've already touched on, is Duncan Thompson. That's how it should be. Well, followed, it, by, it... followed by Arthur Halloway. But, you know, the NRL doesn't seem to want to add in people who played before World War Two for some god unknown reason. <laughs> it's like when they, um, you know, when, when they have, like, online polls about the team of the century and, mm. and, and yeah, and then they say, oh, you, you, can only, you can only vote by voting on this online poll and, and um, no player past 2000, so mm. no player pre-2000 ever makes it because nobody saw... You yeah, know, all those Parramatta Eels players from the sixties and seventies play. You don't ask a question that you would ask educated historians or knowledgeable people in the game. You don't ask that question to the general public who've got no idea or are not going to research into those people. Mm. Is it's pointless? You're just going to get the answer that they want, which is we want to give it to someone who's alive. <laughs> yeah. That's what they want to do. We want to physically be seen putting the medal around the person who's alive. Yeah. yeah, it's just nonsense. Yeah, um, but but maybe you know I can see the merit in that. I mean, someone wants to get Brett Kenny off the right on lawn lawnmower and give him a immortal status. <laughs> <laughs> I mind you, I think there's an awful lot of romanticism about that Parramatta side in the eighties. You reckon? But, I yeah, people want to give that. people want to give Sturlow the immortal status. They want to give it to Ray Price. They want to give it to Brett Kenny. And you could probably make arguments for all of them, but. At the same time, you need to see like, there's a got to be a way of separating people from being greats and all time greats. Oh, I reckon Peter Sterling was one of the best players I've ever seen. He was amazing. Like, everyone talks about Andrew John's creativity and 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 foresight on the field, and oh, geez, he was a good player. So good. Oh, he was. And the yeah. thing that gets me is he's never put forward in the conversation. No, exactly. Yeah. I don't know why. Look, we had you know, Duncan Thompson, Peter Sterling, Andrew Johns. That's just the trajectory that halfbacks went on. Yeah. But the weird thing about, like, the Immortals is it kind of goes in the face of every other award where you normally think to yourself, well, the halfbacks dominate it because they're the highest profile players generally in that team. Whereas the mortal, Immortals aren't like that. Well, Australia historically, though, hasn't had a huge production line of world-class elite halfbacks. A lot of our teams have been really good in the three quarters and really mm-hmm. good in the, in the back row. Mm-hmm. And that's why they dominate the, the thing in the, uh, the Immortals to, and, you know, a lot of the Hall of Fame as well. Mm-hmm. Not many halfbacks in the Hall of Fame for Australia. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, but Nathan, Nathan's here now, so you'll fix that. Well, he's yes. the next one. He's the next one. He's my boy. <laughs> Lock him in. Um, someone said, what odds did you get on Coach of the Year? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think the Dally M Team of the Year would win the comp? Oh, yeah. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah, just walk it in. Even with Stags at centre? <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, Even with a West Tiger on the wing, hey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had to. I'm sorry. That's fine. I fully expect it. Um, so, um, Fr- Freaky, did you see that um, video that Penrith put out a few weeks ago about how we're a development club? And no. that kind of thing. Yeah, it was really good, really, you know, heart you know, pulls the heartstrings about just basically how awesome we are and yeah. you know, our, our club's great and we we're a development club, blah blah blah. And they and they go on there's a line there where it says, but we can't keep them all, you know, yeah. so even if you haven't worn our colours, chances are players in, in your team um have at some stage. Mm-hmm. And they show um Nothaluma. You see a Penrith Junior? I thought he was from Campbelltown. Yeah, I didn't think he was. No, no, I, I don't know why they showed that Interesting. That's still, yeah. Sorry, it's always... Unless, was he born? Was he born maybe in the Penrith area? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because I know, I know, I know that uh, for feeder, I'm pretty sure he's from Blacktown. Yep. But I don't think he was a Panthers junior from memory. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, go by Wikipedia here. It says he Nuffield was born in Newcastle. And he played his junior football for Campbelltown. Um. There's nothing there about being at Penrith. Hmm. I wonder if he went to high school in the Penrith area, though. I know, he yeah. played junior footy in Campbelltown. Yeah, but, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, that's a weird one, yeah. Is Campbelltown part of the Penrith region? I mean, West no. Tigers fans wouldn't know because we don't take any players from there. <laughs> <laughs> no, Cam- so, Campbelltown is definitely a... It's, it's definitely not from the Penrith area. It's definitely a... A much, much lower, worse area than Penrith. <laughs> Pen- Penrith's like Morocco. Um, Morocco. Where they hold that um, Grand Monaco. Prix. Monaco. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're, anyway, we're more I'll... like the the like the jewel of the Sydney Basin, whereas Campbelltown is more like we wish Brisbane. it wasn't in the, the basin. <laughs> oh, Brisbane. Yeah. <laughs> Campbelltown is... Um, West Penrith. Campbelltown like is like the... Doncaster uh, of England. <laughs> yeah. It's the hardest field of Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we found our low point. Um, <laughs> it's the Tamworth of Sydney. <laughs> Except with far less meth. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest is probably a bit more accurate there. Yeah. Will the Broncos, St. George, Bulldogs, and the Storm do a four-way deal to send Adokar to the Dogs in exchange for Bird to St. George and cash or cash space to the Broncos Storm? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. No, yeah. no one is buying Bird. Any Birds. <laughs> <laughs> Greg or Jack. Yeah, that's a weird one. It's weird that uh, I saw some Dragons fans saying, oh, yeah, we could do something with Bird. And I don't know. I, I just couldn't buy him. He's too injury prone. I feel sorry for him, but, you know, it, you can't bring on a player that hasn't played football for, like, I mean, it's going on three years now. Hmm. He, he sort of needs to, like, what, what's he up to? Is he is he still injured, is he? Or, what? Yeah. Well, yeah, he'd, he'd need, a, need a good half year in the reserves, I reckon to start dominating again and then you bring him back up. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I agree. Um, a bloke here called Kent says, my wife has planned the 50 shades of grey evening for a Sunday night and has promised I'll enjoy it. So I can shut myself away in the bedroom and watch the game solo. What time do I pretend to come down with food poisoning so it looks real midday or just before kickoff? <laughs> Did someone ask Paul Kent that? <laughs> yes. Oh, God. No wonder he hates that segment. Like when you watch it, he just hates it. Yeah, he only answers like two questions and goes, oh, I'm done with this shit. <laughs> it's like he's um, a cat and he's been rubbed up the wrong way. Like, yes. you now you rub a cat on the on the back and it hates it. That's oh, my exactly cat what likes it. <laughs> my cat's weird. Yeah, it's you're wide wrong. You don't own a cat, all right? <laughs> I think it's wide wrong. You know in the movie, uh, have I said this before on the podcast in Fifty Probably. Shades of Grey, where uh, he brings out the sushi? <laughs> And it, <laughs> it, fr- it freaks me out. It's actual sushi, by the way. Um, th- th- she sits him in an office. He sits her in an office to sign some paperwork. I guess it's release forms and stuff like that. It's really funny. Um, and 
the, his assistant brings in sushi, and I'm watching this movie thinking, where was this sushi made? Where was it prepared? Has it been refrigerated properly? Like, I thought that was the most dangerous part of the whole movie. <laughs> and now, now, like, when you watch movies in the future, you'll be like, why aren't they socially distancing? Like, this is, yeah. is that right? Yeah, yeah. Is <laughs> mask. Um, is Gerard Sutton the best ref we have in the NRL currently? You know what? I have no opinion on this. Like, mm. the best ref. Like, I, I, I don't even care. I don't even I've, care who the best ref is. I'll be honest. I've not watched and studied referees anywhere near enough to know the difference between who the good ones are and the bad ones are. Yeah, same. Yeah. yeah. If, if Penrith wins on the weekend, then yes, he is. Exactly. <laughs> um, well, we'll have Jeff... a parade for him. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like Manly did with Craig Hartley. <laughs> Took him on a journey over to England. <laughs> um, why did journos persist with asking Smith every day if he's going to retire? <laughs> oh, I... yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I think eventually they want him to go like, oh, yeah, I'm retiring. Oh, shit. That's exactly. I watched the show tonight, and he ba- Paul Kent basically said that. You you yeah. you ask just in case you're the one who he who he releases it to yeah. just in case he says a half sentence that that indicates that he that he's doing that and you're basically just fishing yeah fishing mm. for opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Cameron Smith is too wily to fall for that crap though. Yeah, well he didn't when he retired from Origin he didn't even do it during a game did he he no. sort of did it in between a series or something. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know he won't, probably won't decide until after the game. Yeah, he's, anything. I've, I've had a few dealings with him quite a few years ago, and he doesn't come across the sort of person that likes all of the, um, you know, ceremony stuff about what he's done in his career. That's yeah. probably why he's more than likely looking at, he'll just say he's going to retire at the end of a season so that he can't go on a big farewell tour like JT did. So that's, yeah. that's what I reckon will happen. No, I think my theory is if, if the Storm lose the grand final, he'll play next year. Yeah. So, Penrith, you need to win because if he plays on next year, the Tigers will get Harry Grant. Well, until Justin Potato fucks it up and decides to trade him for bloody Michael Leisha somewhere. And... <laughs> See, I could listen to a whole podcast just of that. I could just... I, if you did that every night, I'd be... Yeah, it's not even that it's about the West Tigers. It's the fact that you're doing it and there's so much pain in every sentence that you say. <laughs> This peanut, oh, just Andrew <laughs> breaking down. We should do a uh, yeah. like a supercut of Andrew Another breaking one. down over the West Tigers, where we're like, who should play? Who should play five eight for New South Wales? And he's like, you know, who shouldn't fucking play five eight <laughs> ever again? It's not what we asked, before. mate. Come down. Yeah. yeah. Remember when uh, when Potato said that he was sacked by the Panthers, and they said, no, you asked for a lease, so you could take on that gig over at West Tigers. He's like. Yeah, well, Ivan Cleary left. (laughs) 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 (sighs) Um, Where can I get a copy of the Eels' last premiership winning colour? Oh, jeez. It's only in 86. It's not like like a Bears thing, is it? You know? No, No, that's right. Yeah. (laughs) The Bears one was The highlights are in newspaper. (laughs) <laughs> Bears one wasn't even on radio. It was before it was before radio came along. I used to love saying to the Poms the last time they were any good it was in black and white and they loved hearing that. <laughs> they did like it. Um What else we got here? How can Greg Inglis and Sam Burgess be medically retired by a doctor and both be fit to play twelve months later? That's a good question. Magic. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Michael Jennings might know. <laughs> oh, jeez. I heard he's a really good magician. Alleged. <laughs> Allegedly. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't think Sam Burgess is going to play again. Nah. But, um, but Greg some, some incidents have happened. Interesting. Some incidents have happened with Sam Burgess, which will probably make him want to stay away from the limelight for the rest yeah. of his life. Yeah. I, I don't think any player that retires can ever come back. I, I think the game moves so quickly these yep. days that Sam Burgess wouldn't be able to handle the pace of it, I, I reckon. I agree. I can't imagine, yeah. I, I agree. Like it was 
like Sonny Bill. Like, really, was that ever really going to work? Mm. Yeah, it's just, uh, and it didn't, did it really? Like, no. And we've been hearing people, you know, asking the foolish question: Should Greg Ings be playing for Queensland this year? Oh, <laughs> well, look, as a New South Wales perform- supporter, I would say yes, please, please put him in. You know, it would be so unfair to him to have him in a Queensland jersey. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so why are Penrith not the favourites? They've won seventeen in a row and lost one game all year. Because I, I can tell you why. Because we don't have any experience. We're terrible. We don't yeah. travel anywhere. Uh, what else? We we go on social media. Uh, all that stuff. We're not going to win. Shame on. What a shame. Oh well. There's, there's no way they'll win the minor premiership, and there's no way they'll beat the Roosters. Nah. No way they'll beat South. South's nah. too good. Nah, they get yeah. too much experience. We can't match it with those clubs. And you yeah, haven't like, travelled. You haven't travelled enough, so it's not fair. Soft draw as well. Who who soft did we draw. really beat this year? Really, Tigers. Yeah, but really, <laughs> we beat the Roosters, but that was. Only no, but, that doesn't, that, but that doesn't yeah. count. And we beat them again. Yeah, but that that doesn't count either. Yeah, and we beat the other three preliminary finalists from last year. Yeah, and we beat everybody else as well. Yeah, Yeah. you beat every team, but those aside from those wins, you actually lost every game you played. (laughs) Mm. If anything, if anything, we're the victims. See, this is why you lost on the ladder. (laughs) I'm not even going to ladder all wrong. It's upside down. I'm not even going to watch it on Sunday. It's not worth it. Yeah, no, mate, you're wasting your time. <laughs> God, what? What? It's weird the hatred, isn't it? Like it's, we're, Pen- it's... we're Penrith. No one, nobody hates us. We haven't done anything wrong by anybody. Yeah. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I see all of these teams that aren't in the finals anymore, and their fans are like, "Well, what about this?" It's like we don't care. No one cares. We were just like, yeah, crying with happiness. Somebody yeah. said the other. Somebody said it on Twitter. I'm so happy that it hurts. Good on you. That's fantastic. Well, the other thing that that's come up, which I really hate too, is um people saying it'll be a premiership with an asterisk. Mm. Yeah, because um it, when you play what 22 games in a row, it shouldn't really count. Mm. Yeah, it's well, just like you know, and, and some of these comments are coming from Roosters fans who are salty. I mean, if they had have gone through and won their third premiership, do you think they'd be saying it with with an asterisk? Of course not. True. But but here's the thing, are they like, are they taking their premiership away from themselves in 1937 when they only played nine games that year? Exactly. But who cares what a dozen people think? <laughs> Is it that many now? <laughs> well, you know, they get bandwagoners as well. Oh yeah, the bandwagon. Yeah. yeah, as soon as the fucking Sydney Swans get kicked out, all of a sudden they're Roosters fans. These people. Yeah, they go up to 16 then. Yeah, yeah. And you got to um, remember, the good thing about Roosters fans is they, they do know what it's like to see their team struggle because they used to be Dragon supporters. <laughs> <laughs> or South supporters. Yeah. Oh, bite. Um, where will Benji end up next year? So this is the last question, by the way. Oh, really? Wow. I don't know. Who do you well? Who do you think could do with Benji more than anyone else? I mean, obviously the Tigers probably need him more than any other NRL club. What? Okay, what about this? I just thought of this. What if he plays halfback for the Roosters? <laughs> wouldn't be bad. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad choice by them or by him. Hmm. Because he went to the Broncos last time. He changed clubs, didn't he? Mm. Yeah. To, to a to club honest, who you wouldn't really think that they'd need him, but he still went there. Yeah. To be honest, though, the the move to the Broncos actually rescued his career because when he was at the Dragons, he was pretty pedestrian. But when he went to the Broncos, he, he found some of that spark again and started to come pretty good. And the, the Tigers you know, threw him a lifeline again only because they don't know what to do. You know, think. <laughs> It seems weird not having Benji Marshall on the side. We should get him back. Okay, that seems like you know. It seems weird not having Robbie Farron on the team. We should get him. Okay, well let's do that then. What are we doing? They retire. Um, and that's where we're at at the moment with the West Tigers history. They're in the um phase again. 
it's the it's the third arm phase. We need to get Phil Gould at the club to start, oh. to start our very own five year plan because he'll be in, he'll be hired there with that five year plan until he dies, and the Tigers will still be running ninth every fucking year. <laughs> See, Gus never actually said anything about a five year plan. No, nah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, but it's so, good to label him because he, you know, he's a good little scapegoat now. <laughs> Do you reckon the Bulldogs would pick Benji Marshall up? No. So you sort of went, should. Yeah. They would should. Benji want to play for them, though? Like, they're so bad. I don't his know if they want to his play. His brother's there, though. Yeah. But still. There was talk, though, that the, uh, the, the Bulldogs were looking at Josh Reynolds again. Yeah, that would be funny, actually. <laughs> and this is the thing. I'm, I'm trying to figure out now who's going to be worse at running a club. Um, Justin Potato or Trent Barrett, and I'm I'm just no one day that both are going to be working together, and that scares me because I don't yeah. know where that'll happen. <laughs> what there's if Trent? There's Tiger fans who want Michael Maguire sacked. <laughs> I remember when um, Ivan went to Penrith and, and Maguire went to the West Tigers. That there was all the, all these West Tigers fans bragging that. Um, our coaches won a premiership. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, good on you. Yeah. They're saying, oh, we got the better coach anyway. And yet two years later, they're still bitching and moaning about Ivan. <laughs> it's funny how when um, when West Tigers won 48 nil against the Broncos, how there's no no mention of Ivan. Yeah, and oh, then, we're going to win the premiership then. <laughs> we, only won when, one, we only won one game after that, I think. Yeah. No, it's just funny. It's not... It's not um, not picking on West West's Tigers, it's footy fan logic. I just, yeah, I'll, I'll never never grow tired of it. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. Who are the worst <laughs> fans, though? Let, so, let's, like, well. Nah. Um, worst fans? I think, say, I think it's Sharks. It's probably, no, I was going to say Broncos. I, 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 I reckon it would be the worst as a player to play for the Dragons because... You know, you're just constantly being compared to that stretch of 11 premierships. And for some weird reason, that's what St. George um, Dragons fans still expect of their team, even though that was about three or four generations ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Yeah. I, I think it's got to be a club that's had a lot of success because the fans don't know how to handle failure. And we've seen the, a lot of Broncos mm-hmm. fans struggling with being losers this year. That's a good point. And, like, I mean, if I think that Sharks fans are generally the worst, that they know failure more than anyone, so it can't be them. Well, not more than anyone. Well. They've been in a lot more finals games than the Tigers over the last 20 years, 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're, Penrith fans are pretty bad. Like, that boo that we get going out at Penrith Park, that's the, one of the most horrible sounds you could ever hear it's so biased it's so we're gonna get we're gonna get a penalty out of this i know every club does it but jeez Penrith, <laughs> I, Penrith fans are really good at that see yeah. i think i feel like Parramatta fans are pretty good at booing too yeah they are yeah yeah, yeah. we're sticking yeah so i actually i think Parramatta fans are some of the best fans out there a lot of my followers on twitter are Parramatta fans and they can take a joke Better than anyone. Oh, dead set. And they love the they love the game. They love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Them and Bulldogs fans. Like, whenever you go to a Bulldogs game, each, each and every fan has got like three or four um, bits of merchandise on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they rip right into their footy. Yeah, they love it. Yeah. Yeah, somebody uh, somebody was asking me today about like the hatred between Penrith and Parramatta, and I know it's talked up a lot in the media. But I've never felt it ever, ever, and nah. maybe maybe I've been sheltered from it or something. But I, I've never had para fans really going at the Panthers, and I've never really felt like going at Parramatta fans. Really, it's just sort of I've always felt like it's a media thing more than the, the actual club. I know that older players talk about the players didn't like each other, but I don't think it's transferred into the fan bases. No, def- yeah, definitely not. I'm, I'm the same. Like, you'd, if those two teams played in the grand final, I wouldn't be, oh, you know, we need to beat our old bit of rivals because no. I don't think they are. Yeah, we, no. We came in in different eras, 
they're quite a they're quite a long way away from each other. Even yeah. though they're both in Western Sydney, they're still ages away from each other, really. Mm-hmm. And neither yeah. neither have actually ever been successful at the same time. Mm. That's yeah, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. So that means you've never actually had these fierce contests. That's a good point, especially so like the one last time flogging the crap out of the other, crush them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 it. There we go. We've nailed that. Yeah, Look at that. So, uh, that yeah. Well, we've got you, James. <laughs> Have you? Are you doing anything at the moment you need to promote? Um, no. no. Well, that killed that then. <laughs> I'm offering nothing to nobody. There you Would go. you like to promote something someone else is doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, apparently, there's a, a couple of websites out there. Yeah, that somebody runs. Yeah, oh, RedTube um... and X Hamster. <laughs> Are they the ones? <laughs> See, the uh, fact you laugh means you know. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm on, on on that one all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's, he likes shopping for hamsters. He's a, he's a fan of those little furry animals. Yeah, the second-hand hamsters to the ex-hamsters. <laughs> yeah, you don't want, you don't want those, those early ones. You don't know if they've been properly house-trained. They might just be pissing everywhere. You can't have that. Exactly. You, you want a, a hamster that's that been broken a, in, eh? There is a section for that on the website too, I'm sure. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll move on. Um... Yeah, I suppose we'll wrap this one up then, I guess. Yeah. Any it was very fun. Like, that had a great time. Fantastic. We've got to get you on more often. <laughs> it's absolutely great having you on here, James. It's, uh, it's every time we get on here, it's always a good a good chat. Yeah, no, nah, it's good to talk footy. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Talk Kenty. Yeah. Oh, Kenty, he goes we'll get, all right. We'll get you on uh, next week and we'll talk about whatever happened, hey? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, I'd love that. Well, okay. I think what we need to do is like five minutes after the Penrith wins the grand final, and you two are both absolutely shit faced. You, <laughs> Freaky needs to needs to get James on the phone there and just press record and just <laughs> gibber on about how much you love Penrith, and that'll be the next episode. <laughs> that has to happen. Be, t- to be two grown men crying at each other. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> Aggressively <laughs> crying as well. I've actually um. The following morning or, or day after the grand final, I've actually got um, cataract surgery planned. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Won't be won't be a big one. Won't be like um, 03 where we won. Dad and I, my brother in law, yeah. went out to the went out to the ground. They won. Everyone was happy. We went back to my place at Leichhardt, had some beers. Dad went to bed, and my brother in law went in, into the city. I was wearing my Penrith jersey on, and I was I was basically like had the keys to the city because I had that Penrith jersey on, and we ended up at Scruffy Murphy's till five a.m. Hmm. and it was just like oh, what, a, what a great night. It was terrific. That sounds awesome. I all I remember from two thousand and three is I honestly thought I was going to have a heart attack for two hours, oh. And, like, I, I just have never felt that sort of, like, uh, just thinking, like, I'm going to die, and I didn't care. And uh, I'm very calm about this one. I was calm about that one as well. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting to see how it all goes. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't wait. I guess just can't wait. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that they can win. Mm. Like, I think that there's a lot of noise going on around about Melbourne. And, like, if you think about their other two grand final wins, they beat the Raiders, who must have – I can't remember, like, the, the news lead up. But can you imagine how fancy the Raiders were against Penrith? And then mm-hmm. the Roosters, they were not meant to beat the Roosters in the grand final. And, mm-hmm. and I reckon the Storm are just as strong as what the Roosters were back then. So, yeah, and just Penrith's too young and arrogant um, to be worried by any of those sort of um, pressures, I think. Yeah. It's interesting that Penrith chooses to go against teams who have got, um, you know, people have been questioning the uh, the validity of their cap, salary cap-wise. <laughs> but Canberra were way over in 1991, mm-hmm. and the Roosters in 2003, now the Melbourne Storm. Well, I tell you what, when you think about if they beat the Storm and you can say they the 
the Panthers probably beat the team of the 90s, one of the teams of the, the 2000s, and then another one of the teams of the 2000s. Like, if you're taking down all the big guns in, of the year, it looks pretty good. They're climbing the biggest mountains. Yeah. yeah. And we only ever play capital cities and grand finals, like Canberra, Sydney, Melbourne. We That's just right. Yeah, we just chase the biggest fish. I've, I've got a few stats. Okay. Only, only three, but it'll be... Oh, shit, I've got four here. So every yep. time Penrith has been minor premiers, they've gone on to win the premiership. Yeah. That's a good one. Easy one. Um, Nathan Cleary will play his 100th NRL game in the grand final. When Cameron Smith played his 100th game, Cleary was nine years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Um, the Panthers' spine of Edwards, Luai, Cleary and Coruscant have played a combined total of 20 finals matches. The Storm spine of Pappenhausen, Munster, Hughes and Smith have played 67. Mm. Munster has 16 of those and Smith has 41. <laughs> <laughs> and this final series has seen an average of 51.63 points per game, which is the highest ever in a final series. Gosh. Yeah. I, and I think that that's the thing that intrigues me about this grand final is that you got to score points against the Panthers to win this game. And the, I love the Storm's attack, but, jeez, I mean, how many teams have been able to put on big scores against Penrith? Like, And that's the thing that gets me is no one talks about Penrith's defence. Mm. It's been rock solid for months. Yeah, that stat, I can't remember what it was in the opening 20 minutes. That's what really sets up the wins for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they do that and then they kick away – uh, in the last 10 or 15 minutes of, of each half, sorry, of, of the first half, and then they just kick away in the second half. But, yeah, you're right, because defence isn't sexy to talk about, is it? Like, it's just, no. No, no, you can't find too many measurables um, in, in, in that, yeah. But no, it's, uh, I think, for me, it's not just because I've got two Panthers fans on here, but I do actually think Penrith are going to get the job done here, but it will be a, a low-scoring game for me. I don't think it's going to be one of those blowouts. No, and if and if, and if Melbourne wins, you can just delete the whole episode. And well, it's an asterisk, it. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's another Didn't count asterisk anyway. the storm. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All I do is collect asterisks. I'll have more asterisks than actual premierships at that stage. <laughs> exactly. Very good. <laughs> All righty, people. Well, uh, thanks for thanks for joining us there, James. No worries at all. It's fun. Cool. And uh, obviously, people think we've got to thank our sponsor, Manscaped. Freaky, what can you tell us about Manscaped? I can tell you that they keep my balls nice and smooth because they've got the best ball shaving equipment in the entire universe. Even aliens would shave their balls or whatever they use, their reproduction sacks, whatever. Um, So they would go to manscaped.com and they would buy whatever they wanted, and when they get to the checkout section, they'd put in the code NRL, and they would get 20% off and free shipping to anywhere in the known universe. Well, that's all right. If they go to Aliens, they're going to go to anywhere. Exactly. Yeah, so that's, uh, check them out. NRL's your code. You're welcome. Um, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Fergo Freak Pod. We're on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook. So get over there and like, subscribe, and all that sort of stuff. Um, make sure you give us a five star review, and um, we'll read them out on the podcast. Put them up on the website as well at uh, FergoandTheFreak dot com. They contact yep. us over there too, Freaky. Yeah, send us an email. We'll do an email uh, segment coming up. Exactly. And uh, on that note, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Catch us next time.